All right. Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. Today is July 6, 2023. Top story this morning, 497,000. That is the number of jobs that the U.S. economy added for the month of June. That's according to ADP private payrolls data. Now, I just want to mention this is ADP. This is a private organization. This is not a government number. The government jobs number from the Bureau of Labor Statistics comes out on Friday morning. That is the jobs number that most people are talking about when they talk about how many jobs were added last month. ADP is viewed as a precursor to that report. And the ADP, the private sector data, is known to vary wildly from the Bureau of Labor Statistics or the government data. But that being said, wow, 497,000 jobs added in the month of June. This is a blowout jobs number any way you look at it, even if ADP is known to fluctuate from the government number. And I can tell you, looking into this number, I find it believable because look at where the jobs were added according to ADP. 232,000 jobs added in leisure and hospitality. That is something we have seen in the government's numbers. Maybe not that same number, but that has been the leading category in a lot of those reports. 97,000 added in construction. That number makes sense because we're seeing a boom both in new home construction right now. Home builder stocks are doing phenomenal in the first half of the year. We'll see if that carries over into the second half of the year now that interest rates are rising again. But we've also seen a boom in manufacturing construction. Remember the CHIPS Act and the Inflation Reduction Act, all that government money that's being poured into revitalizing hand-picked industries in the United States, namely chips, batteries, electric vehicles, solar panels, all those unicorns and rainbow categories. Well, the government is just pouring billions of dollars into construction of factories in those categories. So I'm not terribly surprised to see 97,000 jobs added in construction for the month of June. And we've also got 90,000 jobs added in transportation, warehousing, and utilities. That one, uh, okay, transportation, warehousing, utilities, I'm a little skeptical of that number, especially looking at a lot of the like the logistics managers index that came out yesterday at an all-time low, seeing the purchasing managers indexes and all of the manufacturing jobs showing that there are declines in that sector. So that number was a little bit a little bit fishy to me. But then again, we've got utilities is in that category. And if we're building a lot of houses and we're building a lot of factories, well, they're also running power, water, and sewer. They're also they're ramping up public utilities to those facilities as well. So maybe those numbers, maybe that passes the sniff test that way. Categories that are losing jobs, manufacturing lost 42,000, information lost 30,000, and finance lost 16,000. Well, again, those numbers make sense. Manufacturing, we've had some abysmal PMI reports. All of the uh, Fed manufacturing reports from all the various regions, they're all showing that manufacturing is in decline in the U.S. The 30,000 lost in info, that's the big tech job cuts. Not surprising to see that there. And 16,000 lost in finance. Again, not surprising when you look at what's going on in the banking system. So, guys, this report, it seems accurate to me. I'll be honest with you. It does. It defies belief. How could the economy be booming the way it is? But if you look at where we're losing and where we're gaining, we're losing high-wage, white-collar jobs, and we're gaining low-wage hospitality and transport jobs. So I'm, I'm not terribly shocked to see that. Elsewhere, we got a lot of other data. We got initial jobless claims rose by 12,000 last this last week to 248,000. Meanwhile, continuing jobless claims continues to fall down another 13,000 to 1.72 million. So people are losing jobs, but they're quickly finding new jobs. Again, that falls in line with what we're seeing in the ADP numbers. And uh, the one thing you really got to keep an eye on is hours worked. The average hourly work week in the United States is currently at 34.3 hours. That is at the lower end of the band that we have been in for the really the last decade. When you see that number get lower, it usually precludes job losses. First, you cut back on the hours for your people. Then you start cutting your people. Well, right now at 34.3, we are at the very bottom of this band that we've been in for about 10 years, between 34.3 and 34.6. Well... We are now at the lower end, so that could be precluding job cuts on a massive scale. And you're going to see a couple of data points that kind of supports that we may be entering that category. Uh, another thing going on today, we've got Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is in China on a much publicized visit. 
And I just wanted to show you guys this. Look at this picture right here. This is Janet Yellen getting off the plane to go to China in, in China right now. And look at the welcome wagon that the Chinese have rolled out. Now, keep in mind, half the people in this picture are press. And then you've got a handful of Janet Yellen's security detail. And you've also got the flight attendant standing there next to the jetway. The Chinese sent virtually nobody to greet the U.S. Treasury Secretary at the airport. This is a not at all subtle dig at Janet Yellen and at the United States. The Chinese are giving us the middle finger right now for the world to see. And I thought that was hilarious when I saw that this morning. Good luck, Secretary Yellen, on your visit to China. And before we go any further, I have to say thank you to Patriot Gold for sponsoring this live stream. Guys, when we're talking about jobs, we're talking about the economy and the potential for job losses. I know these reports look good right now, but beneath all of it, we are seeing a shrinking backlog of jobs, of orders, of liquidity. There are bad things on the horizon. And when those things finally show up in the numbers, you will be thanking yourself if you own physical precious metals like gold and silver. And that's why no matter what goes on in markets, I am constantly dollar cost averaging into gold and silver, including just yesterday when I placed an order with Patriot Gold. I don't just promote these guys. I am also a client and I have got some shiny Austrian Philharmonics and 10 ounce silver bars headed my way courtesy of Patriot Gold. Thank you to Patriot Gold. Go to nsfgold.com. There's a link down below in the description to check that out or call 888-988-5401. And as always, be sure to tell them that nobody sent you. And with that, let's shrink my big melon of a head and look what's going on in markets. Uh-oh, big red candle down at the open this morning. S&P is down a full 1%, down 47 points roughly at 4,400. Look at that, 4400.00. Big down day for the S&P. The, Nat, the Dow not doing much better. Down 304 points or 0.89% trading at 33,983. And the NASDAQ leading the way lower. Down 1.23% this morning. 165 points lower trading at 13,626. What's going on in stocks? Well, 497,000 jobs added according to ADP. That has everybody freaking out saying, oh my God, the Fed is going to tighten again. Higher rates coming. Dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. That is what is going on in stocks this morning. We're back to that ridiculous good news is bad news phenomenon. Why? Because we don't have free and fair markets. We have a Federal Reserve that controls everything. And so good news is bad news once again. And looking at the U.S. dollar, it's kind of all over the place this morning. The Dixie was sharply lower right before that ADP report came out. That was uh, right here around 8.30. As soon as that ADP report came out, the dollar spiked higher. Looks like it's giving back some of that now. It is currently down 25 basis points at 103.12. And looking at the bond market, guys, pay attention to the bond market. Look at what's going on here today. The 10-year yield up almost 8 basis points, back over 4%. All right, the 10-year has been creeping up pretty much since the announcement of the deal on the debt ceiling, and the last couple of days, it's seen a big spike. The two-year, 5.04%, up 10 basis points. The one month is flat today at 5.19. It looks like the big mover right now is the five-year treasury is up 12 basis points. Interest rates going higher. It's dragging mortgages higher with it. Keep an eye on that. That could affect the housing market. We saw the average mortgage rate at the last week of June was at 6.85%, and the 10-year has just gone straight up since then. So we could, could be heading back to 7% mortgages again. And check this out. This is on the U.S. 10-year. I had a couple of people message me or commented about this yesterday. I also saw it mentioned on Twitter a couple places. The 10-year Treasury yield, this is going back to about August of last year, but you can see here from October through now where we are, we were in this, what appears to be a bull flag consolidation pattern, and we just broke out above that recently, and ever since we broke above that, we've had two big green candles up. So this would suggest we may be continuing that upward trajectory of the 10-year yield that we saw for most of 2022 with sharply higher rates. If that's the case. That means more pain for banks, more pain for insurance companies, more pain for mortgages. So keep an eye on that. I would expect to see at least one back test of this line. If we are going higher, maybe we see something like that, or maybe we see a back test and we see a breakdown and a failure. But keep an eye on that 10-year yield, folks. That is an important one. 
And check out the one-year yield, the one-year U.S. Treasury, currently yielding 5.46%. Guys, we have not seen this level in the one-year Treasury since the dot-com bubble burst. This is going back 23 years to December of 2000 was the last time the one-year Treasury yield was this high. And look down here, look at the RSI on the one-year yield. Look at where we're at right now. Look at that there. How overbought, or I should say, how how high the momentum is on the one-year treasury. Now, I also want to point out to the last two times the RSI on the one was anywhere near that. We had here from uh, looks like the end of 2018 into the beginning of 2020. And we also saw here at the GFC in the lead up to the GFC. And what did the one-year treasury do the last time the RSI got this overbought? Well, it puked lower. With the GFC, it puked lower with the Powell pivot and then the eventual uh, pandemic and everything that happened then. And I expect at some point we are going to see the same thing happen here when the Fed holds their panic meeting in the middle of the night on a Sunday and decides to lower rates back to zero. At some point that is coming. If I knew when, I'd be a billionaire. But I can tell you at some point that is coming. The economy just cannot afford higher interest rates. And check it out as rates have been rising. After the debt ceiling and since Janet Yellen has started her borrowing bender, something we predicted on this channel, a lot of other channels were talking about it, look at what's happened to the reverse repo. Now, reverse repo was sitting at about $2.3 trillion at the end of the quarter, but look where we're at now. Since the end of May, here's May 31st, we were at $2.254 billion the day before the debt ceiling deal was hit. And look at what reverse repos have done ever since, heading lower and lower. Guys, what was it? Here, I wrote the number down here. $387 billion has drained out of reverse repos and into short-term treasuries since the debt ceiling deal was passed. The liquidity cushion in the bond market is being, it's drying up at a, an alarming rate. As Janet Yellen borrows money to refill the treasury's account, all the money that she should have borrowed when the, we were up against the debt ceiling, well, she's borrowing that now. The Treasury general account is somewhere around $400 billion. A lot of that money that the Treasury has borrowed since the debt ceiling was raised has come straight out of reverse repo. And even though it's the reverse repo has been providing this liquidity, it hasn't been enough to keep the interest rates lower. We got the one-year heading higher, and we got the 10-year heading higher. So we're still a long way from a liquidity crisis. There's still almost $1.9 trillion sitting here, but that reserve of liquidity for the banking system, for the bond market, it is evaporating very quickly right now. And it's bleeding out at about 100 billion a week. At some point, that's gonna hit zero. And let's just say you wanna be holding some gold and silver when that happens. Looking over at commodities this morning, speaking of gold and silver, we've got gold is down about $7 or 0.4% trading at $1,919 an ounce. Silver is down 30 cents today or 1.3% at $23.09. Precious metals don't like higher rates, guys, so gold and silver are reacting to the move up in rates this morning. Crude oil is still over 70 bucks, trading at 71.47, down 32 cents, and natural gas is down a penny at 246. And here is the number, guys, the ADP payrolls number. Private business in the U.S. unexpectedly created 497,000 jobs in June the most since February of 2022, and well above forecast for 228,000, led by consumer-facing services, leisure and hospitality, trade and transportation, education and health services, showed strong gains. Still, the market was fragmented with manufacturing information and finance showing declines. And you can see here, we were in this high 200 range for most of the last year, and then today, whammy, almost 500,000 jobs added for the month of June. And here you can see, this is the actual ADP report that just came out this morning, and they break it down by the sector here. Let me zoom in a little bit. Change in U.S. private unemployment. There's your headline number, 497,000. And I want to call out the big ones, guys, because here we go down here at Leisure and Hospitality, 232,000 jobs added. Almost half of the whole report came from hotels and Starbucks, pretty much, right? These are low-wage jobs. This is not necessarily a boon to the average worker. Other sectors adding a lot. Construction up 97,000. Again, no surprise there. We've got new home constructions are running rampant right now. We've got factories being built because of government deficit spending. So I'm not surprised to see that. 
And we also got trade, transport, and utilities adding 90000 That was the only one that really stuck out at me as possibly being incorrect. Uh, but the rest of the report does pass the sniff test. Big losers, we got manufacturing losing 42,000 jobs. We've got information losing 30,000. And financial lost 16. So that has the market sitting here saying, okay, the Fed is definitely going to react to this. And currently the interest rate futures are pointing to a 92.5% likelihood of another rate hike in July. And uh, guys, that's only about 20 days away. So barring some disaster, the Fed is going to hike again, again, 92%. But that's even got people starting to think about, well, what about September right now? Well, still most people are saying we're going to hike once in July and then probably pause in, no, in September. But you've got a 26% likelihood of another rate hike in September. Now, that would be the Fed kind of walking back their, their reduction in the pace of tightening. Remember the skip? A lot of people think the Fed has now gone to 25 basis points every other meeting. But still, you've got about a quarter of people are saying they're going to hike in September again. And even in November, you've got a, about 38% of people saying we'll get that second hike by November. So interest rate futures are pricing in a more aggressive Fed right now. And that's probably why we're seeing this big move down in the NASDAQ today. Uh, something else I want to point out, Americans are working fewer hours and that holds clues for the job markets. This is something to keep an eye on. This, along with that JOLT report, job openings, that comes out later today. We should see a big step down in job openings to accompany this 497,000 jobs added. We'll see if that's true. But further decline in average work week risks a pickup in layoffs. Survey data show manufacturing hours work indexes sliding. Weekly hours worked, an early indicator of changes in hiring patterns, as well as demand, has reached a key inflection point. Businesses, especially those that have struggled to hire and retain workers, typically seek out a number of different ways to handle softening economic conditions before laying off workers en masse. That includes scrapping job postings, hiring less, cutting temp help, and reducing hours. And the reason I talk about this is, look at this chart. This is going back to about 2007. And you can see we have this band here that's highlighted. That's 34.3 to 34.6 hours per week worked. That is kind of the healthy band that's where you want to live in the job market if we go too much higher than that we've got a job market that is starved for people if you go lower than that that means job cuts are coming well right now we are at 34.3 we are at the very bottom of that band right before the layoffs start if we bounce here and we stay in this band well then that means that the current job market is sustainable if we head lower that means layoffs are coming we may now be at an inflection point, Pollock said. Zigzagging this range would indicate a return to normal, while a further decline would not only be concerning, but also suggest a real slackening in the labor market. For sectors like retail trade, transportation and warehousing, as well as construction, that's a lot of the sectors that just added jobs in that ADP report, hours worked have fallen below pre-pandemic levels, which could make those sectors, sectors particularly vulnerable to job losses according to economists at Macquarie Group Limited. So watch those hours worked. That is an important category. We're at the lower end of the band right now. This could be precluding layoffs, even though we just had a ton of jobs added. Uh, meanwhile, initial jobless claims. Number of Americans filing for unemployment benefits rose 12,000 from the prior week to 248,000. We did see a big drop last week from 265 down to 236. Well, we clawed back half of that this week. 248,000 people filing for unemployment benefits for the first time in the week ending July 1st. So slight uptick in job losses. However, silver lining here, continuing claims for the U.S. fell by 13,000. So yeah, there's people losing their jobs, but they're quickly finding new ones. We had 1.72 million continuing jobless claims for the week ending June 24th. That's the lowest in four months suggesting that conditions for job seekers to find employment are improving. You see, we have been trending down really all year here. Now, this is something uh, my moderator, Mish, mentioned this morning. This may be capitulation from job hunters, people getting laid off in tech, people getting laid off in finance, saying, I'll take whatever is out there, finally settling for those leisure and hospitality jobs. And that's why we've got this decline in continuing claims. Another thing, uh, Challenger job cuts just came out. U.S.-based employers announced 40,000 job cuts in June of 2023, but that is the lowest level since October of 2022, 
and compared to 80,000 in May. So a big reduction in job cuts, although June is typically a month that sees that. You know, if you look at some of the previous months, especially that big spike in January, we did have a lot of job cuts announced earlier in the year. That number is coming down, although there is a little bit of seasonality reflected in that. Uh, but long story short, guys, there's it's kind of hard to read the labor market right now. If you just look at the headlines, then the labor market is strong as all get out. 497,000 jobs. Great. I mean, I'm sure that's what all the politicians are going to be saying in front of the press today. They're going to look at the headline numbers and they're going to say, congratulations to me. But you have to look at where the jobs are. What sectors are they? They're low-wage jobs. The high-wage jobs are still losing people. Finance. Uh, information. What was the other one that was losing jobs? Uh, manufacturing. All right. So we're losing high wage jobs. We're gaining low wage jobs. The hours worked is coming down. So it's not all unicorns and rainbows in the job market. But that being said, it's kind of hard to look past that big headline number, 497,000 jobs added. Certainly the Federal Reserve is not looking past that. They see it. And the market is worried about what the Fed is going to do. And that is why stocks are selling off this morning. And guys, I just want to say thank you very much for your time. Thank you for watching. Thank you to my Patreon supporters for everything you guys do for the channel. Looking forward to talking to you guys at 1 p.m. Eastern time today for our weekly Zoom call. And I also want to say thank you to Patriot Gold for sponsoring this live stream. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. I love you guys. Till next time, live small and dream big.